All right, so uh, here we will cover how to post content on any social network. So right now we're looking at Google+, Plus, but what we'll talk about here also applies back to Twitter, and it'll apply on Facebook and Instagram, and every network we'll talk about uh, how to post uh, this content. The main idea is uh, post in your voice. Now, this is something that I cannot exactly teach. Okay, what's, what's your voice? This is how does your business communicate? Um, things even like... Uh, do you write in terms of like slang or proper language or it's dependent on your also your target audience so depends on your target audience are you gonna use fun informal language if you are a daycare center probably are you gonna use fun informal language if you are a lawyer probably not it depends on your audience how you're going to communicate with them. So if I'm joining some of these communities on a specific topic, that also uh, informs how I'm going to communicate on those communities. So um, depends on your audience. Uh, what are your phrases? Um, use of language, etc. Um, further, how to post. Is it a uh, promotional post or a community building post? OK, what that means, promo versus community. Now, I have here the word community, and we've been talking about communities, but uh, this is slightly different in terms of this. Promotion is, of course, ads for your products. However, however you define ad and however you define product. If I'm Victor's Bakery, my product are the birthday cakes and cupcakes and all of the stuff that I'm selling, right, as a... Um, as a bakery. Uh, the ads, as we'll get into detail, is it going to be coupons? Is it going to be links? Is it going to be free samples? We'll, we'll cover that in a moment. And community building posts are attempts to get more followers. So I'm going to be posting stuff on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. And I'm often going to be trying to think, am I doing a promo post or a community building post? And they're both valuable, of course. Um, I'm trying to get more followers so that when I post stuff, I can have more possibility of sales. But eventually I have to post stuff about ads and what am I selling? Here's a deal this week. Click here to get 20% off, etc. And the thing is that somewhere I have to balance those two. If I'm just always about the promotion, about the sale, about the buy this, buy that, well, that's going to turn off followers. I'm going to constantly get ads. Why would I want to constantly get ads thrown at me? And if I'm only trying to do community building posts in terms of here's an inspirational quote, here's some funny fact, well then I'm not, promote, I'm not doing the self-promotion you'll find a balance between the two as you get more practice. What kind of content are you posting? Here we have text, pictures, links, video, etc. Um, I would recommend that you kind of vary this up a little bit. That 
Today I'm going to put a simple text post, and I'll, I'll show examples of these in a moment. But I'm just going to write a simple text post, and then I'm deciding is it a community building post or a promo post. Then in a couple of days I'm going to post a video. But again, is it a video for promotion or community? And then next week, maybe I'll do both. I will put a picture and a link, and it's going to be advertising a sale. So it can be one of each, or it can be mixed up all together, com combining that is promotion community. This one is optional, but highly recommended. Keep it positive. Um, you want to create content that is positive, which then invites positivity. You want to, to reply uh, to people positively, which keeps it positive. There's always going to be jerks, and you get maybe not positivity back, but you can ignore that stuff, or you can report it. Uh, but if you create positive stuff, you often get back positive stuff. Get what you give. Invest time in original content, repurposed content. Replies. So original content, you created that photo, you wrote that little text, you shot the video, it's all original. You created and own it yourself. Repurposed. Someone else created owns it, and you pass it along. You reshare it, retweet it, whatever the network calls it. But I'm going to see someone else's great looking photo of a cake, and I'm going to borrow it to post it to help promote myself. And then the third thing about the replies, Uh, you build community by replying to your followers or reaching out to new followers. Uh, that was when I was showing over on Twitter last week that when I was searching for the keyword cookies and I identified, okay, the Betty Crocker website and I looked at who was replying to the tweets of Betty Crocker, I then went to reply to those people. I told, I would say something like, oh, you like that cookie? We've got a version of it too with half the calories. So I'm building then community uh, that way. Again, the term community in Google Plus means one thing, but in general of all social media, community building is that you're getting followers, you're getting eyeballs, you're getting visits, you're getting traffic, you're building community that way. So here's, yes? Um, when you were searching for Google Plus visits, You know, and, and it shows like the first four that are related to cookies. Mm -hmm. um, is there some sort of search engine optimization that goes on there? Um, it, 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 there is, and that's dependent on, yes, what you're searching for. So if I'm searching just for, you know, cookies, what happens is I get results of, okay, here's communities that have the keyword cookies in the title or in the description of the community. Here's people that have the keyword cookies in their name or in their biography somewhere. Here's examples of collections or actual posts. Here are posts. 
Uh, so, okay, they don't have the word cookie in their name, but they have the word cookie right here in their text. So yes, there is some SEO, there is some search engine optimization happening here in terms of I've got these keywords uh, in, in my posts or communities or my profile of those that people would be searching for. So looking over here, yep. so this one, someone's got that keyword there and then I, I found them and we want to take advantage of that as well in terms of um, I'm creating content with keywords that people might be looking for. Okay, so the way I would tangibly do this stuff about how to post, here's how I would do this. Uh, communities. Um, I, I joined this Cakes community. So if I, if I go back to that one, I'm part of it so I can post to it. So if I click the little pencil to post to a community, it'll show here, okay, this company is about to post to this community. You can still change it here, clicking there. You can actually then switch to another community. But I'm posting to this community. I have then various options I can do here at the bottom. What do you want to share? So here's where I can write text. Um, does anyone have an opinion on know, C's candy? Okay, so I'm posting something related to this world of cookies and baking and all of that into this community. I'm posting a question. Uh, this is related to not creating dead end content. So further, how to post, don't create dead end content. That is, make it open ended by asking a question soliciting feedback, etc. So a bad version would be, click here for 10% off a dozen cookies. And then I add, I add my link. OK, that, that would be a bad tweet. That would be a bad post on Facebook, even if I had a really cool picture and stuff, that's a bit of a dead-end post. Because it's it's obviously, of course, very um, promotional, self-promotional, maybe too much. A better one would be, are you hungry today? Want 10% off a dozen cookies? We've got you covered. And then the link, the exact same link, worded a little bit different, a little bit more in marketing terms, a little bit more friendly, a little bit more authentic. The, the verbiage, the speech of Victor's Bakery is going to be like this, fun, friendly, personable, which might work for this business, but not that business. But the idea here then, okay, I'm, I'm kind of talking colloquially, friendly, still promoting the same thing, buy our cookies, 10% off, follow this link. But I'm saying it in a, in, a, in a much funner way. Even up here, if I then attach tasty cookie JPEG, even if I um, even if I attach a photo, that's still not working as great as it could. This next one here, this I believe is a stronger post because you're fun, personable, but you're still trying to do the self promotion. It's not dead end. You're you're asking a question. A person may simply reply. Maybe they never click, but they reply and they say, "That's a tasty looking cookie." Well, I have identified someone that took the effort to like or reply or whatever, where then I can further 
latch on to that person and follow them or reply to them or keep the ball rolling of, a, of the social in social media, in social networks. Purpose. You can get replies, likes, etc., which let you identify potential follow up accounts if they interacted with you you may then follow them like their post reply to them etc and that may come back to you the same or better um, consumers want authenticity um, I'm yet another business trying to promote my wares well I'm better than the rest because I'm going to reply to you personally. I'm going to talk to you like a real person. I'm going to be friendly. People respond to that. Um, I reply to what the person originally wrote. I follow them or whatever way I want to interact. And then they say, okay, they're, they're serious. They're, they're real. Someone's there behind the screen. It's not just a nameless company. I'm going to maybe continue. I'm going to follow through. I, I will click it. Maybe I won't buy it, but I'll at least click and I'll follow the link and Actually, I don't want cookies, but that birthday cake looks great. You, know, you never know. The thing about social media, a lot of the times, is that you're going to try things. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And especially if you're doing it all in the free aspects. But you're spending your time, but that could come back to you in much more meaningful ways. Yes? Are my followers seeing the postings of the people that I'm following? No, um, they wouldn't. They would only see what well, you're I'm posting. Okay. Yeah. So, what, so somebody I'm following happens to put some objective material up there. It doesn't reflect on you. It doesn't come back to you. It doesn't affect you. No. The only way is that um, someone really goes out of their way to go to your account and see who you are following, and then goes through all of those people and see what they're posting, which is not easy. So, but, so on Facebook, so I have people that post on my timeline. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't, uh, this doesn't have that. Google okay. Plus doesn't have that. Now there's also settings in Facebook to turn that off, but often the default is to leave it on because right. Facebook thinks we all want to share everything to each other all the time. It's never been a problem, I was just curious about it. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to post something in this community. As I said, I could write some text. I could also attach a photo. Um, I think there's a limit, but um, it's probably like a dozen photos or something. You can attach a variety of photos to uh, each individual uh, post that you make. So you can make a little album, so you can attach a variety of photos. A tip here is a good photo helps your post. So uh, a well shot or well composed, nice looking photo can entice people entice people to action I'm trying to sell cupcakes and I attach a really great looking photo of a cupcake that you can't resist uh, then hopefully that helps the person click to go buy that cupcake in most networks you can attach more than one photo to 
particular post. I read a couple of articles where it seems to suggest that posts with two or three attached photos seem to give better results than only one photo. The reason for that is, let's see if I can find any examples here. All of these just seem to have one photo. But when there's more, uh, maybe like right here, but when there's more than one photo attached, there's then often the button to see next photo. So it causes people to, oh, well, here's one. Uh, it's only two, but you get the idea that this has got two photos attached. Let's say there were three or four photos. They would only be able to see one and a half photos, so a person would have to spend a little bit of time to then look at the other photos, capturing their attention a little bit longer, perhaps enough for them to make the decision to click or buy or whatever. So studies seem to show that posts with two to four photos are more effective because it causes people to pause and interact with your content longer. In the real world, perhaps, if you think about it in this phenomenon, that if a person walks into a business and spends, you know, two minutes or less in the business and they walk out, okay, they didn't buy anything. But if they spend a little longer in the business, they walk around a little bit more, something catches attention, I go to the back, I go here, I go there, people are a little more apt, since they've already spent that amount of time in the business, I kind of like what's there, okay, I'll buy something, I'm here. Where if someone that comes in and leaves pretty fast, you lost the sale, if you can entice people to stay longer in your business, they may be more apt to buy something. Same thing with the social media. If you've got more than one post, I mean more than one photo in your post, you can entice people to stay longer and perhaps then buy something. We can add a link. When you add a link here to most of these networks, it will then often create a little preview of where the link is going. I'm just going to grab an example from a website. So I'm just going to grab a link. Here's, a, here's an article on this website, How to Record a Podcast. Uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it into the link here. What will happen is then the network will will go look at that page for a moment, extract often the first bit of text or graphic, and then now my post here will have this this graphic, this little bit of a blurb. So uh, this is coming from the title of the article, from the website, and then a little bit of text at the beginning. You see that right here. So this doesn't relate at all to cookies and baking and anything like that, but I'm just showing you here. Uh, so I could write something like, so imagine this is a recipe. Um, you want to learn to bake the best birthday cake for the perfect six-year-old's party. It's easier than you think. So some sort of text catching attention. Um, my terminology and such friendly. I've attached then a link that will take them back to the website. So imagine that's a recipe there. They go back to the website. I've got them. I've got them captured on my website where they can read the article, click a link, buy a product, read more articles. And that's why attaching a, uh, a link Add a li adding a link to a post is very useful 
because you can drive traffic back to your website or you can further market to the user. Where you can further self promote your content. Google Plus has something fun here also, adding a poll. Uh, so here I can ask a question and add a variety of choices, I think up to five, five possibilities. So I can say, what's your favorite type of cookie? I can attach a photo to the whole post or to individual ones, it's individual options. So we can say chocolate chip. Oatmeal. What's another kind of cookie people might like? Peanut butter. Anything else? Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle. I like that one a lot. So I can do up to five, and then I can attach a photo. So we'll have there. This is much more of the community building post. I'm not. I, I, I do sell each of these. I can be obvious about it and then put buy one now. I could do that, but like I'm saying, I want to mix, I want to mix up um, promotional tweets and community building tweets. I'm not fully just trying to get a sale out of this post. I'm not going to everything that I post I'm, it's not always going to be. Uh, by this, by that. It's it's going to be also building community, being friendly, creating uh, followers and, and stuff like that, getting the word out to my business. If I then attach photos to this, again, to catch people's attention, like these, that stands out. I want to see that. That stands out. Great photo. This doesn't here. It looks like spam. It's just a link. It's just a, and then it's medical insurance. So that that's not cool. Over here, racing. Uh, these photos stand out. Polls are fun. A great way to gauge I don't think that's how you spell gauge. What's that? AU. G A U. There we go. Thank you. Uh, a great way to gauge uh, sentiment in a community. For your followers. Great for community building. And great photos to get attention. Yes? So will I go back and look at my post three days later to see that everybody likes chocolate chip cookies? Or do people who are viewing my post see the the uh, uh, results status of the poll when they look at it then 20 people like more chocolate chip peanut butter or yes everyone would see it uh, those that uh, voted in the poll uh, there's going to be a button that says see results well it'll it'll show the results and then they can uh, further see who voted for yourself what's useful about that is that then you will see exactly who voted on what so if you identify, these are the people that voted for chocolate chip, these are further people that I can engage with. So it's just, all of this is like getting a, 
a way to like identify more people about who's interested on a specific topic so that I can then further market to them. All of these endeavors are just trying to identify people. This is what marketers in the real world would love. Who saw the billboard? Who cared about it? Who saw the guy flipping the sign and thought about it? In the real world, marketers, they have that difficulty in identifying the real people that are really interested. Us, in as, as digital marketers, we have a lot of a, of a head start in that, checking I can see who were the 35 people that liked this? Who were the seven people that voted for that? And all of that helps me then to um, reach the right audience. For any type of content you create, you need the goal being active. Beginner, one new original post every week. Intermediate, one, two, three posts per week. Advanced, one post every day. That's a big, tall order. That's a lot to do every single day, something new. Yes, you can take weekends off. That's fine. We all need time off. Uh, but at the minimum, having something new once a week, a new post, a new poll, a new photo, a new link, that that's the minimum. Now, I did, I'm saying new here, but it also can apply what I said earlier about um, original or repurposed. Um, I'm going to, there's nothing wrong with sharing again a photo or a link that I posted last month that's repurposing my own content. Especially if something was popular one month ago, I can post it again because those that have already seen it might see it again and think, oh, okay, I did, I remember that and I was interested in it. And those that have never seen it, well, it'll be new for them. and sprinkle in replying, liking, following other people's content. Maybe I can set aside 10 minutes once a week where all that I will do is just reply to people. Or I will just like people's stuff. I will then be getting notifications over here Someone replied to your post. Someone followed you. Someone voted on your poll. You're identifying people to that further market, further target. So again, it's not all about the look at me, bye, 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 this is my stuff. You also want to be active with other people. We'll uh, cover, again, these topics from a different angle when we look at Facebook next week, and then after that, LinkedIn, and, and so forth, as the class goes on. I'm going to wind down the main lecture in a moment, but general questions of what we've talked about today? Yeah? Does Google Plus allow you to share across platforms like uh, Instagram does? Not quite. Every, every network, to some degree, is protectionist, to some degree. Now, um, you can, for example, share to Facebook, from Facebook to, to Instagram a little easier because they're owned by the same company. But Google Plus and Twitter, they're competitors. All of these are competitors to various degrees. Some networks make it a little easier that if I want to share this from one network to another network, it does let you. But since Google Plus is, is big, it's by the big company of uh, you know Google, it, it doesn't very easily have you that, okay, I want to share what I posted here also to my Twitter. You know, the, the share button right here doesn't include Twitter. You could go around it by, um, you know, every post that you make has its own unique address. So you could then copy your address to your post, go to Twitter, and paste it into Twitter that way. But 
in Google Plus, no, you don't really have a way. Let me also share this out to the other networks because they're usually competitors. They don't really want to help each other. Should I be posting unique content on each platform? Well, that's a good point. We'll come back to it in a lot more detail as we go on, but let me say briefly here, beginner, same text, same photo, different networks, intermediate, same text, different photo, different networks, advanced, different photo, different text, different photo, different networks. Perfectly fine to do this, that I'm going to write my text and attach the photo or the link or the video, whatever, the exact same content. It's perfectly fine to then put it exactly the same on every network. That's fine as a beginner because then you start to identify more people replied to this or reacted to this on Google Plus than Twitter. More people reacted to this on Instagram than Facebook. You're getting a, a sort of a gauge of where your audience is if you post the same thing to different networks. More intermediate is some portion of what your post is is the same and some portion is different. You're mixing it up a little bit to one network versus another network. The purpose of this also is to determine your audience. Your audience is um, uh, on a particular network and also to reward your audience. The reason that a person is on Twitter is because they don't want to be on Facebook. The reason that they're on Facebook is they don't want to be on Google+. You are trying to be on all of the networks to reach the audience, but if you've got friends and family on Facebook, you're not going to convince them very easily, join me and follow me on Twitter. They're already on Facebook, and they already barely figured out how to use Facebook, they're not going to go to Twitter. You've got friends and family and business connections on Twitter, and you want them to come over to Instagram, you're not going to convince them. They're already happy enough on Twitter, they've got enough to do, they're not going to go to another network. One way that you entice people to join you on the different networks is if you put different things on the different networks. You're only following me on Facebook? Well, you're only getting half the cool stuff. All the other cool stuff is also on Twitter. So that would be an enticement for people to also follow me on the different network. So the most enticement for people to follow you on multiple networks. Something different on every single network. I've got to keep up to date with you. Oh, you're posting this coupon on this network, but not on this network? Well, I, I want those coupons. I'll follow you on that network. Best case scenario, of course. And the basic one, at least you're active on each network to find your audience. And a little later, I will show you a website where you can consolidate many networks into one interface so that I don't have to log into this one and that one and that one. And I can manage them all in one dashboard. I'll talk about it a little later next time because um, I've got to have something to keep you coming back, right? <laughs> so um, these are the big ideas. So yeah, long answer is uh, I would recommend the advanced one. Uh, intermediate is, is still very good. Makes up content a little bit. But it's perfectly fine to put the same thing on every network. Any other questions for today's topics or past topics? Okay, so I'm going to wind down the lecture at this point. We'll have a little bit of lab time until 1. If you would like to practice anything we've done here or you have one-on-one -on -one questions, I'm going to save these notes and put them into the network folder.